What are the five essential apps for every PhD student? Stick around, let's talk about it today in this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up, Navigating Academia family? If this is your buddy and personal academic mentor, Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to discuss my feelings on what the five most essential apps are that you need to download that every doctoral student should have. I'm gonna extend this to every master's student as well. Yes, in the title of this video, I mentioned a PhD, but this could be a PsyD, an EDD, a DSW, anything, right? A DSL and strategic leadership. Whatever doctorate you're doing or master's degree you're doing, I really recommend downloading these apps and learning how to be able to proactively use them to save you time, help you with time management, and get done what you need to get done to get this degree. Never forget what I tell you on this channel, which is the goal of grad school is to get out of grad school, okay? So we're gonna do that together. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button. You can follow us at the social media channels below. So whether you're just starting your grad school journey or whether you're in the middle of it, these apps, like I said, are gonna make your life easier and more productive. So let's start with number one, Evernote. This app is a great way to keep all of your notes and ideas organized in one place. I can tell you that, you know, because you can easily add images, audio, other media to your notes, uh, this makes it the perfect place for me to be able to keep all of my research and project materials as well as my ideas for new studies, which always come at like the randomest times. I'm going for a walk, I'm sitting in the bathtub, whatever it happens to be, right? This app helps me out a ton. And of course, it also helps me to be able to access my notes from literally anywhere so I can easily continue my work from home or the office. So this is number one. Second one also has note in the tile it is EndNote. You guys know EndNote as well as I do. This is something where when it comes to reference management is key. Yes, a lot of people these days also use other things. Zotero, Mendeley, Jabref, there's a ton of them. If you hop down here to publicationacademy.com, we have an entire module that is dedicated to reference management softwares, the pros and cons of different ones, which ones are free, which ones you have to pay for, as well as essentially click by click, how to be able to use them. We screen share and go through everything. So if you are interested in how to be able to get ahead in your academic career, whether it's getting into grad school, getting an academic job, or just succeeding when it comes to your dissertation or thesis, check out publicationacademy.com, become a monthly member, super on the cheap, and it's going to give you over 100 hours of training, including over 50 hours just with yours truly. So if you like my stuff, please check it out. It helps me out a ton, okay? So EndNote, the app is specifically designed, obviously, for academic researchers, and it helps you to be able to manage your references and citations, right? You can easily add articles, you know, other sources to your library, organize them into folders. That helps me out a ton in terms of my research. And it also integrates with uh, you know, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, that helps me out a ton. And it makes it really easy to insert citations into my research papers. Otherwise, it takes me forever to be able to manually do it. So I really recommend using a reference management software, whether it's this one or something else. And staying on task, obviously, can be challenging, especially when there's so many distractions around, especially in this day and age. And that's why another app that I recommend, number three, is called Focus To Do. So this app helps you prioritize your tasks and manage your time more efficiently. You can make your to-do list, set reminders to be able to help you stay on track. I need those things, okay? It also has something called a Pomodoro timer, and that can help you stay focused for 25-minute intervals, and that makes it the perfect app for when you need to work on your thesis or your research project. Next up is Grammarly. This to me is a must-have app for every graduate student, I'm telling you now, including my grad students. You know, this app helps you improve your writing skills by checking your grammar, your spelling, your punctuation. I used to see a million videos for these, especially in terms of like YouTube ads. I'm sure that you, like me, you, you see enough YouTube ads and you know your eyes roll into the back of your head, same thing on stuff like Instagram, and it's just like, oh my gosh, another one of these silly things. Is this thing actually useful? This one I can actually tell you is, especially because it integrates with stuff like Gmail. Um, I have folks who work with me, you know, every summer, I always have this competitive uh, application process to be able to be one of my summer interns for Navigating Academia. If you're interested in that, send me an email at jsingh at publicationacademy.com and I easily can give you information on that if you're interested in working for me. Um, but I can tell you that one thing that we always have is individuals who happen to be from other countries or are, you know, in the United States or Canada, however, English isn't their native language. And so it's really great, something like Grammarly, to be able to have it because it's giving you suggestions on how to be able to make your writing more concise, more clear, checks that spelling, checks that grammar, all that stuff. So whether you're writing a research paper, maybe it's an email, grant proposal, whatever. So Grammarly, it's a great tool to be able to help you present yourself professionally, all right? Last but not least, number five is Slack. 
Slack, whether, I mean, I'm telling you right now, yes, incredibly useful for grad students, but also incredibly useful in industry workplaces if that's the direction that you wanna go with your career. It is an essential app for staying connected with your colleagues, with your classmates, with your supervisor. Uh, you can create channels also for different projects and different groups. Uh, to me, this is key. So it's very easy to be able to share files and collaborate on your research in real time, as opposed to having something like a, like a Dropbox folder or a series of folders, or I use something called Sync because it's blockchain enabled. So think about Sync, which is S-Y-N-C. It's like blockchain enabled Dropbox. I've been using it for years and years, cheaper than Dropbox, more space. I'm a huge fan, so you can check that out as well if you need a cloud, all right? But you know, Slack has a built-in chat feature as well. So you can have these real-time conversations with your team within the app, even when you're on the go. This helps me out a ton, especially with my lab members, because it's not one of these situations where I always wanna be you know, taking the time to be able to send a million emails and all, and then waiting for responses. The chat option in Slack saves my butt, all right? So those are my five essential apps for every doctoral student or master's student. Let me know in the comments below if you use any of these apps, or maybe there's another app that you find essential on that grad student journey. And don't forget to like, comment on, and subscribe for more videos like this. I appreciate you guys so much. Lots of love. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.